Hey friends, welcome back to Minute Rockets. I got a couple questions about the motor test stand that I used in my demonstration of the four grain rocket motor. So I thought I'd do a quick video on how I made that super simple test stand. So here I've just got a, about a foot and a half piece of one by four pine that I had left over and I'm just gonna cut it in half. So about two nine inch long pieces. Just gonna cut it in half here on the bandsaw. And I'm just using this one by four pine because that's what I had laying around from another project. So any wood you have that is sturdy enough and large enough to drill holes in for the motor should be good for this type of a project. Speaking of holes, now that we have our two boards cut, we're going to take an inch and a half bit, which is 38 millimeter, which is the size of our motor that we're going to be testing. We're going to chuck that up in our drill press, and we're going to use this to drill a couple holes in the two lengths of board that we cut. I did the holes about as close as I could to the end and still have about the same amount of wood on all three sides of the hole, so it would be plenty sturdy for the motor that's going to be slipped into the hole here. I started out with the two boards stacked together, even though my bit obviously isn't long enough to go through both of them but it was long enough to go through the first one and then score the second one so I would know right where to drill on the second one so that they would be perfectly aligned. So once I got the first one drilled through I went ahead and drilled the second one through using the mark that had been scored into the second board as I drilled through the first board and that way the two holes will be perfectly lined up with each other. And the hole wasn't perfectly in the center of the board and that's fine. This isn't a precise cut as long as the two boards more or less line up then it's okay that the hole isn't perfectly centered in the board or the location of the hole doesn't really matter as long as there's plenty of meat of the board around the hole on all three sides. So now you can see we have the holes drilled in both of our boards and those holes are just the right size for a slip fit for our motor to slide in and they hold the motor nice and solidly with not much wiggle. Real nice fit from that drill bit that we used and, and we're going to be able to use those holes to solidly hold the motor while we test it. So next we need a way to retain the motor in the test stand. So we're going to mark a couple of holes right next to the thrust ring that we'll be able to screw a screw into to hold the motor in the test stand so it can't back out during the test. And once we have those holes marked, we'll just go ahead and drill a small pilot hole for the screws just to keep them straight while we put them in here. Could have drilled these pilot holes a little bit bigger, but... That's the drill bit I had handy. So that's the one I used. So once we have the holes drilled, we'll just go ahead and pre-screw our screw in there so it'll be easier to put in once we're out on the test stand with our motor. And we are just about ready to use this test stand. So now that we have our boards prepped for our test stand, we're gonna need some kind of a square. In this case, I'm using a fence post, any kind of a square post in the ground. This happens to be a four by four fence post, but it doesn't have to be just something substantial enough to hold the motor against the forces that will be generated. This motor only produces about 60 pounds of force, so not a whole lot, but this is a substantial fence post, so it'll be plenty strong enough. So I'm just gonna use the motor itself to line up the two boards with each other. So I'm gonna slip the motor through both boards, through the holes that we drilled earlier, and then I'm gonna place the boards on each side of the fence post, and then I'm just gonna use a clamp here to hold the boards on there. This way I can take it on and off as I please and it's not a permanent structure. If you wanted to, you could drill through the boards and the fence posts and put a bolt in there or screw the boards to the fence post and have a permanent connection if it's something you're gonna be using regularly and don't mind having permanently attached to your fence. In this case, I just wanted to clamp it to the fence that way I could take it down. I'm not gonna use it that often and it's easy enough to set back up each time I need to use it. So once we have that all good and clamped on there, just give it a good push on each side, make sure it's plenty strong enough, and we'll go ahead and screw in the screw to retain our motor. And once that screw is in, that will keep the motor from backing out. And you wouldn't think it would back out because all of the force is gonna be pushing it into the motor mount, but a lot of times if motors chuff or if there's any resonance or instability in the thrust, they can actually push themselves backward out of the test stand. So you definitely wanna have them retained in the test stand. And so there we have it. You can see it's now solidly mounted in there. I went ahead and added a chain around the fence post and connected the eye bolt on the front of the motor. And that's just for extra insurance. Even though this motor mount is quite sturdy and I don't see really a chance of the motor breaking free, if something happened with the clamp or if the boards came loose somehow with that chain there, there's really no chance of the motor going very far from the post. That chain, no matter what, is gonna hold that motor within a couple feet of the post. So there's not really a chance of the motor becoming a land shark and shooting across the yard or toward any bystanders or buildings in the area.
So yeah, I was really happy with this test stand I made. Just a real quick one so I can test out motors here on the fence. I'm hoping to build an actual test stand setup that measures thrust and internal motor pressure. So keep an eye out for that. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see that build. I have a lot of the parts for it. It's just finding the time to do it. So stay tuned for that. Everybody have a great day.